Hey guys, welcome to episode number 22. Oh. We have Bobby Watts flying the training. I'm learning. What is that? Is that a Raptor? It's no. An, it's an Impala. It's an Impala. We, I never saw that ever before. But uh, anyway, we're going to talk about simulators. Uh, a lot of you guys have requested that, and so we're going to bring it to you. Um, there's a lot of simulators out there. We're going to focus on the most popular two. And uh, we're just going to give you all kinds of tips. We're going to give you a little bit of history about real flight. We're going to talk about uh, uh, the Phoenix simulator a little bit as well. And then we're going to give you some tips and tricks on how to, how to practice with the simulator and a few important things that you can learn how to fly in the simulator. Yeah, it'll be cool. Yeah. And, uh, you know, this episode is brought to you because of your suggestions. So continue to do so. We appreciate it very much. The more ideas you give us. Um, the more episodes we will bring out to you that you guys are interested in watching. So exactly. So here we go. Episode number 22, Flight Simulators. Oh, 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 oh. Simulators, here we go. All right, guys, here we are. Again, we're going to talk about simulators today. Let's do it. And uh, there were so many, there's so many simulators out there's there. We really can't talk about all of them. There's no way. There's a bunch of them. Um, but we're going to focus on the two most popular ones just, just for fun. Yeah. There's a lot of them out there. That doesn't mean they're the best. That just means they're the most popular ones. They're the ones that we see people flying and talking about all the time. Exactly. One of them is Real Flight. It's designed by a company called Knife Edge. Um, it's distributed in the United States by Great Plains. Great Plains is the same company that brings to you OS and Futaba yep. to the U.S. market. The other one is called a Phoenix. Phoenix was developed in Europe um, a few years ago. Phoenix is distributed in the United States and I believe around the world by Horizon Hobby. Horizon Hobby company that brings you all these brands like E-Flight and, and uh, Hangar 9 and Park Zone and Spectrum and JR and so forth. Yep. Um, what other simulators are out there aside bunch, from these two? Dude. There's a bunch. So there was the Real Flight. There's um, Reflex XTR. That was actually distributed by MRC Hirobo for a yeah, while. Yeah, Hirobo for a while. Yeah. Um, there is that. Air is that thing still around? I, I don't think? know. I know the XTR. I think some people still use yeah. it. I use Reflex for a while. It's good. And yeah. then there's uh, Arrow Fly. I think it's another one. And then there's a bunch of uh, other ones. I wouldn't call them cheapies, but I've seen a bunch of other ones that you can download for free online. Yeah. yeah. I know a line includes one with their 100 or whatever I haven't even seen it one of the things that it's important to mention about simulators is I've I have a computer background I I've been in computers all my life and I know a lot about code and one of the hardest things to do with simulators is to create the right physics for it yep um, you know I can actually I could probably write a simulator software myself very quickly but to make it feel realistic that that's is hard. the challenge that's it's the very very part. very difficult to that's do that's the hardest part and that's what these two guys real yep. flight and C uh, phoenix has uh, have sort of mastered and have made better than the other guys out there and I'd i believe that's, that's why, they're, why they're the yeah. most popular ones. that's why they're the most popular and and not to mention the fact that they're backed by big very well reputable companies exactly you know, the, the two giants i guess you could say of uh, in the hobby industry around the world exactly. so um yeah, so That's we're good. we're gonna talk about we're gonna start off with Bobby talking to you about Real Flight first. He's yep. gonna give you a little bit of history about how it all started. Yep. Um, Bobby Bobby started flying uh, when he started flying helicopters. His first simulator, I believe, was uh, a G two Real Flight like G two. Back in two thousand two, two thousand three. Yeah. Yeah. For me, it was the same thing. I started flying Real Flight G two in two thousand three or four. Yep. I think it was two thousand four, and then it sort of evolved, and it's all the way up to Real Flight number six right now. Yep. Um, I stayed behind. I still have on one of my old computers. Real flight, 
uh, G3.5, which was an upgrade from the real flight G3. It really and good. it was nice. It and it's still well. good for today's standards. Oh, it's, perfect. it's still better than some of the cheapies, like we call them. No so, doubt. And after Bobby talks about that, he's going to give you some tips, some pointers on how to make your simulator experience more useful with it. And then I'll come in and I'll talk a little bit about Phoenix. And, uh, and we're also going to talk about SimStick which is a really cool device that uh, some guys in England uh, designed. You can and, sit on uh, your just, couch and fly. Yeah, sit on your couch, no wires, no nothing. So we're going to talk about that briefly. Yeah. And then finally, I think we're going to head out to the field. Yeah, we'll do a, we'll do a uh, quick flight and show you how to take your simulator practice and move it towards the real thing. And hopefully we'll show you a few things that might help you with learning a few new maneuvers. Yeah, cool. All right, let's get it done. Let's do it. So now it's time to talk to you guys about some real flight. So what is Real Flight? Well, I think Real Flight was probably the first um, program to come out made by a company called Knife Edge, once again, out in Oregon in West Coast, USA. And I think they were probably the ones to probably take it to the next level and make everything feel really, really good, I'd say. So the first Real Flight that I know of that came out is the original one. Now you can see based on the quality of this graphic, that came out a while ago. I think it had a serial connection into the computer. It had to have come out maybe late 90s, early 2000s. Um, I never flew that one. But the first one that I had was this guy, Real Flight G2. Had the music, oh, if you guys remember, had the music in the background that was really cool. And then it had random guys yelling at you from the field, like, oh, fly lower or whatever and whatnot. So G2 felt really, really good. I, I thought it was nice. And I remember this was even before like the Raptor 30 was real popular because that came in like an expansion pack later. Anyway, then we went to Real Flight G3 and Real Flight G3.5. This was a huge improvement. Um, here they did things such as the virtual flight instructor. They brought in Todd Bennett, Pete Neotis, um, I believe some other guys. Uh, I know Frank Knoll was on the airplane side, so they, they brought in the virtual flight instructors where they'd show you the maneuvers and they'd fly around and stuff. And um, it just, it, it looked really cool. They had blade farts in there. So they started to take it to, you know, a whole nother level of how everything started to feel. So this must have been eh, 2005, 2006 maybe. Um, then they went to G4, they just kept improving them. You know, you could take off of water and stuff. Um, and then G5, would come in, they had multiplayer with, uh, you could like combat people online. And the helicopters kinda, um, they kinda put the helicopters on hold for a while until Real Flight 6 came out. And I helped out with the development of this um, along with Matt Bodos. Uh, we did some work with this. And um, pretty much the way that, you know, that I kinda leaped right into the project. As they told me, Real Flight was created from physics first. So everything in the whole real flight world is correct as it is in here. Everything's giving a, given a value. For instance, they give the helicopter the exact weight. They put it on the scale and everything. They'll weigh the blades. They'll get the uh, airfoil of the blades. And everything that you're physically adjusting in there, it's a total real atmosphere over there in, in the computer. That's why if you slam into a building, I think they even give the, like, the buildings a, a weight so that when stuff starts to break apart, it actually responds somewhat like it should in a, a crash scenario. Um, so everything's physics-based first, which was really cool. They had us flying fly bar models, they had us flying fly bar list models. They said, okay, if, your fly bar, if a typical fly bar model wants to do this, we want to replicate that. If a fly bar list does this, we want to replicate that. So I think it's really, really cool the way they chose to approach it. Um, now, Real Flight, just in general, um, has, uh, it's only, it only works with a PC. So you, if you have a Mac, you can't do that. You could probably get boot camp and load um, Windows onto there, and then that would work just fine. But you need a PC to run it. Um, Real Flight also, I think the, one of the best parts about it is the fact that it comes with its own transmitter. Um, it comes with just a radio, very similar to, I, f I believe it's like a Futaba 6 channel. Now, um, Real Flight 4, 5, and 6 come with that. And then back then, Z2 and G3 came with like a little bit of a square. They made their own controller for it, but it won bad. And the beauty of that is that you don't need to take your nice, precious transmitter and have that sitting at the computer with the kids playing around and bumping into the computer and breaking switches. So I always really like that. Then you can also take it and you can plug in 
um, uh, your separate radio if you want to. You can play multiplayer, split screen. They've got all these sorts of features in there. So big fan of the Real Flight. I've always used it. I've tried Real uh, Reflex XTR. That worked pretty well. Um, I have tried Phoenix, and that works pretty well too. But I've always seemed to just groove really well with Real Flight 6. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up the program. We're going to fly around. I'm going to show you a few things that we can uh, do in there, a few tweaks and everything, and show you how to make it fly a little bit better, perhaps, and uh, just show you how to have fun with it. So that's Real Flight, and let's go. Let's take a look at it. So lo and behold, we have Real Flight 6. Uh, this is, once again, this is Real Flight's latest, this is the latest version of Real Flight that you can get. Um, G2 through G5.5 has, you know, they just slowly added features one by one. And now this is what they have. So I'm going to walk you through a bunch of the cool things in here to do. There's a bunch of different things in here to just keep yourself occupied, even if you're just bored. Um, here's the controller that comes with it. It's called the Interlink Elite controller. Um, it once again replicated from Futaba. It's nice. They did a good job with it this time. There's just the, the throttle holds actually here and uh, um, the uh, gimbal itself is very very smooth there's no ratchet in there for helicopters and then we have our idle up on this side uh, there's also dual rates and then there's something there's a knob here so the cool thing here is that you can press and select your model and you can go through um, you can hit your airport all through the controller so you don't even have to click your mouse or anything like that you can just flat out go through and find whatever you want you can uh, look up different models um, you can pull up the Rave, Sailplanes, RJX Extreme. They've got so many of these things. So this is Real Flight 6. And what I did here was they highly recommend the uh, Mega Pack. This is the helicopter Mega Pack that come. I think you have to buy it separately. I believe it's under $30. Um, and this comes with everything from the Synergy N5C to um, Thunder Tiger's latest one to a KDE version. There's all sorts of helicopters in here. I think they added on, um, God, it was a boatload of helicopters. It, really, there's a ton of them in here. So this is with the helicopter mega pack and real flight six. So that's what you gotta go with. So let's take a look. So when we, when we helped them out with developing real flight, we really wanted to get the physics as good as they could be. And we wanted everything to feel as right as it could. So that way I'm flying the Ray Flabberless here. That way when I uh, you know, sit here and just goof off and want to just fly around like I do at the field, you know, we wanted everything to feel as real as it could. And this one feels okay. I mean, it, it really feels pr fine. They worked on things such as blade sounds. You know, the blade barks, we tried to get that a little bit right. The crashes are wicked. Let's get a good one here. The crashes are pretty good itself. I, I think that they're just wild. There's a bunch of things in here. So some of the benefits that I found with Real Flight. Um, number one, they've got the sticks here. So if I'm with, at the computer with someone, if I'm teaching them something, I don't know if the other simulators have it, but I know Real, um, uh, Real Flight does. It's like our training camp that we put in the videos for you. And so it's got the sticks right here. So you can see exactly what I'm doing, which is nice. They've also got a bunch of cool different little features, such as the binoculars. I don't know if you can see it here. So I can reset the model. Oops. Let's see. Binoculars. So I can reset, and I can go fly away really high, and I can see exactly what the model is doing. So that helps me out if I want to try maneuvers real far away. I'm not sure which way I'm going. You know, I can use, I can use the binoculars to help me out with things like that. A uh, bunch of cool little features here. Uh, let's see, this is a viewport. You can set up different camera angles around the whole um, field. and So you can take a look here at the, the viewport. So you can set them from everywhere else. And there's just a really, 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 really a lot of cool things here. Let's get rid of that one. What is this here? Ah, and we can go into multiplayer right from here. Which brings us to our next thing that we can do. We can play multiplayer. So with multiplayer, I believe G3 three may have been the first one with multiplayer. You can go into a session, host a chat room, and go fly with your buddies. And it's really cool because you can, they can do everything to combat now. They've got all sorts of cool things. So what I would recommend is that as much time as you can spend on the simulator without getting bored, it's only going to help. It won't hurt you. If you're flying on the simulator an hour every day, half an hour every day, whatever you've got, 
you're really gonna progress. You're really, really, really gonna progress. There's no way you can't because the more time you're physically spending behind the sticks, you're just gonna get better. So let's take a look at some other things. Um, now, the first button you can go to here, Simulation Physics, this is a uh, menu that they pointed out to us when we were testing. And there's a few different options here. There's beginner, intermediate, and realistic. It comes default realistic. Um, this is just the way it's going to interact. This is just the way it's going to feel. Now, what you can do is you can go into here. Beginner and immediate is obviously, if I had to guess, it's probably just softer. What you can do is you can go into custom here, and you can go into the physics speed. Now, the physics speed has been in every version, I believe, since G2. Um, and I took mine here and I increased it from 100 to like 105, 110. This can give you a uh, more realistic sort of feeling. So instead of a helicopter, let's say you take it knife edge and you hold it on its side. Um, we call it floating to see how long it, they float. You know, a real life model, if you hold it knife edge, it's going to drop. Sometimes in the simulators, they want to hang for a while. So you can just adjust this up. If you adjust it up, it's going to float less then you might have to turn your cyclics down and whatnot. So this is, you know, a, a few other things. Um, flight model, realistic or easy, autopilot assist. They've just got so many features in here, I really can't go through everything. But I just wanted to show you a, a few of the uh, cool things here. So we've got uh, everything from um, photo fields to um, these are computer. This field I'm, where I'm at right now, this one's called, uh, let's see, what's this? called airport real flight ranch so this one was made as a actual computer graphic field it's a whole real field that they created in the computer which means that i can do different can uh, camera p types so for instance i can do like a chase view and i really think this is useful so we can sit here and you know we can fly around with it and this will help us with all sorts of things you know i recommend this chase view for if you're learning anything new so let's say you want to learn pirouetting flip I'd go really high, like about here, and sit here and pirou flip till you're <laughs> as long as you feel like doing it. Because if you mess up, you've got all this altitude, you know, until you're crashing. Or you can do cool autos from this. You know, you can do cool autos with the chase, the chase view. Um, so there's lots of different things you can do here. That's once again, you can only do this with a real airport, not a photo view. So we'll go into here, recordings are great. You can start a recording. Um, you can send it to your buddies. Hey, check out what I did. Just a lot of really, really, really cool things in here. Um, there's another thing I mentioned earlier. There's virtual flight instruction. These are great if you want to learn. Uh, let's see, here's Pete Neotis talking about aileron TikToks. And... Here we're gonna practice uh, doing aileron TikToks. <laughs> His voice That's is a little high. This maneuver is uh, the model traveling um, from 10 o'clock to o'clock. Thanks, Pete. So there's Pete showing us how to do aileron TikToks. Pete Neotis, he was a, he was a, God, he was one heck of a pot. He was doing the reverse pirouetting stuff before people could even like pirouette, like not that much, but he was really good, really technical guy. And he just got out of it. I think he and his family own a Italian style restaurant in Chicago now. So hats off to him. He uh, competed at XFC. I think he was podium a few years. So really, really good guy. Um, so this is pretty much uh, the important things I wanted to show you guys in real flight. There's once again, there's so many things to really go over. Um, so now what I'm going to show you for the very last bit is just the few important things to tweak in real flight to make a helicopter fly better. So here we go. So what I did was I went into the aircraft editor. I've got my mouse here. My lap is my mouse pad right now. So if I go into aircraft, I can go into edit. Usually you have to save it as a copy in order to do that. So here we are editing, um, editing the aircraft. Once again, real flight takes everything and it's just so amazing how they uh, physically take a model from like a CAD software and then they designate all the values of it. You know, they put in the CG of the model. Uh, they've done everything. There's so many parameters in here where instead of just making it like a computer game, they made it just like real life. Um, you can go into your airframe and change everything. So the main things that I usually have to change um, is in the electronics, you can go to your um, 
for instance, this is a fly bar model. In Real Flight 6, what they did was instead of having different uh, values for your fly barless controller, they put in an electronic fly bar under electronics. So here you can go and physically change all of your, you can change your rotation rate, which is your, uh, your cyclic throw, um, elevator, aileron, and rudder. So for instance, rudder, you want to speed it up. You just go to your rotation rate, 720 degrees per second. Done. So you're pirouetting two times per second here. Um, once again, aileron, aileron elevator. So these are things to just increase your cyclic rate. Another, another thing that I do a lot is I'll go into airframe, fuselage, heli mechanics, and then I'll go to the main rotor and I will go to another way to do this is in your cyclic pitch deflection and uh, collective pitch. This will just give you more pitch, um, less pitch. Then what I do is I'll go in and I'll modify the uh, weight of the blades. Um, let's see, blade type here. So you can edit a blade and do all sorts of things like that. There's so many different things. You can change airfoils. But usually the only things I'll really play with is cyclic rate, collective rate, weight of the blade, and then if it's a flat bar model, I'll play with the paddle weight. Those are really the most important features. As soon as you start tweaking past there, as soon as you do one thing, something else suffers. So that's the biggest sort of uh, advantages, and those are really the only big things that I tweak while I'm in real flight. Um, there's also other things. You can make your own helicopter canopy. You can take a picture and put it on there. There's just so many things in real flight. But this is just a brief overview of Real Flight 6. Oh, there's one other really cool thing in here. Check this out. You'll, you'll like this. When they showed me this, I was just dumbfounded. So let's say if I'm learning a four-point TikTok, let's say. So four-point TikTok. And then I goof. I can rewind. Reset, rewind. And I can go right back into it without even crashing. So it's like I never even crash. So I can come splatter it, rewind. That's so cool. <laughs> I don't know. I think that's sweet. They also put on another thing called sky writing where you can fly around and uh, we can turn it on here really quick. View effects um, trails. So we can go into here. So I turn on smoke and I can fly around and oh, actually there would be no, oh yeah here's sky writing. So it allows me to fly around. At night it looks really cool too. They've got night flying in here. I can draw my name. I don't know just a bunch of different things to really you know keep you the whole point is just to keep you flying. Whatever you can do. Hey we landed. Whatever you can do to just keep yourself interested in it that's what I'd recommend. So this is Real Flight 6. Now Bert's going to chat with you about Phoenix and he's going to fly it for you. Okay guys, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the Phoenix Simulator. Um, the Phoenix Simulator is relatively new compa compared to the other flight simulators out there, um, especially when compared to the real flight. The real flight, like Bobby said, started many years ago, probably in the early 2000s, early to mid 2000s. The Phoenix started around mid to late 2000s. Um, the Phoenix right now is on version 3 um, and this was developed by a company in uh, England. Um, the developer pretty much came out with the idea, designed the flight simulator, did all the coding and everything else and came up with, a, with a, a very very good physics engine that actually made the simulator work really really well. Um, in my opinion the physics on the Phoenix is just as good as the, the physics on the real flight. Um, some simulators have more features than others, some are lacking features in comparison to others, but basically you get some things on one that you don't get on the other. So you really can't say that there's a better system because again, it's, it all depends on what you're looking for. For example, the Phoenix simulator also has the feature where you can go online and play on the internet against other users or with other users and fly together, um, just like Real Flight does. Phoenix again also has a very good graphics interface. In fact, in my opinion, I believe the graphics on this Phoenix simulator is a little bit more vivid. It looks like more realistic. It doesn't have some of the gadgets that the real flight has. It seems like real flight has um, a little bit more features, especially like uh, some of the effects and stuff like that are a little bit more elaborate on the, on the real flight. But the Phoenix has really, really good graphics. Um, 
again developed in England a few years ago um, some sort of uh, I guess negotiation went on with Horizon Hobbies and Horizon is now the distributor for this product um, the beauty of the Phoenix simulator is that you can buy this and you can pretty much use your own transmitter so you can use anything from like a DX6 I believe all the way up to like a DX8 you can use a Futaba radio as well you just place, basically plug in your radio you, you teach the system how to configure it and off you go if you don't have a radio that you can use say that you're a total beginner and you don't have a radio yet well you can buy the big box right here I think this is like another forty dollars on top of the original price I believe this goes for about hundred and seventy dollars and the other one goes for about hundred and thirty and with this you get the same Phoenix simulator the same software but in addition to that you get it with a Spectrum DX5 E transmitter just you know it's really not like the best transmitter you can get but for this kind of stuff it just works out perfect so um, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna talk a little bit more about it I'm gonna fire up the Phoenix simulator and fly it a little bit and show you some couple of things here and there that you uh, you might want to know about the uh, the Phoenix sim okay guys we're gonna talk a little bit about the Phoenix right now this is version 3 um, version 3 is what's available right now um, we just heard actually that version 4 is about to come out and uh, there's a beta version as of right now that's available for you guys to download. I really don't know a whole lot about what, what version 4 is going to come out with. I uh, heard that uh, there's compatibility improvements with some hardware specifically with some uh, video cards. Um, I think there's some new views that you can use to, to uh, views for the helicopter and stuff like that and, and quite a few improvements but obviously for now we're gonna focus on version 3 this is a good old-fashioned Flybart Aurora that I have here and I'm using uh, Spectrum DX7 good old-fashioned Spectrum DX7 in this particular case I'm running the uh, SimStick which we're gonna talk about here in a little bit but uh, as I told you before, as, as you look at this thing, the, the graphics on this thing is just awesome. It really has really, really good graphics. Um, and, uh, you know, again, it doesn't seem to have all the gadgets that, uh, that real flight has. Um, I suck at the simulator. <laughs> but, uh, but it actually has awesome, awesome graphics. So, let me see here. Let's take a look at this real quick. Um, sort of like running through basically kind of like the features and stuff that it's got. Um, with the Phoenix simulator as opposed to with the real flight you have to as I explained before you have to set up the uh, the transmitter um, whether you get the basic version that uh, allows you to run your own transmitter or whether you get the uh, the version that comes with the Spectrum DX5E you have to go in here and set up your transmitter and it sort of walks you through how to calibrate it and it basically wants to know how you know what what uh, switches uh, control what functions and what channels and what sticks control elevator L aileron and pitch and, and uh, throttle and all that kind of stuff as well as rudder um, so we're gonna skip that um, basically what you can do here is like if you want to actually let's go back in here real quick um, let me go back here and find this other screen I'm looking for the screen where you can actually tell it what transmitter you have and you know when you first buy this this simulator you basically uh, select the type of transmitter you're running and as you can see here you can create a custom profile I have a custom profile because I'm using SimStick I'm gonna talk about that a little bit later during the SimStick uh, segment but as you can see you can run any sort of Futaba radio here um, anything from like a 9C uh, CP or a 7 CP actually even a Fuel Force 6 I never even seen that radio but you can run anything from there to like a 14MZ you can run high-tech radios like the Aurora or the Optic six any any sort of JR radio um, all the spectrum radios of course for example here you could you know have anything from a DX4E all the way up to DX8 the dx 7 sc is not specified here but I'm sure it'll be specified on version 4 and um, if if you have an older version you see DX8 but you have a new DX7S both radios are literally the same in terms of their power output and how they how they function so that's the first thing you got to do is set up your transmitter um, aside from that as you can see here you can set up your controls and go to the main program settings um, the personal settings here is just where you put your username and uh, you know your location where you live and all that kind of stuff and this is basically used for when you do the online um, interactive sessions with other uh, pilots that have Phoenix simulator as well 
If you go here, you can see the physics, and this is kind of similar to what Bobby showed you in real flight. Very, very similar. As you can see here, it says simulation speed. You know, the default is 100%. If you want to kind of practice stuff that requires, that you think would actually require a lot of reflexes, I recommend that you bump this up. You can start with like 105, 110, 115, and so forth. And what that does is that makes the helicopter fly faster, and it seems it, it, eliminate some of the floatiness like Bobby was talking about so it kind of makes it a little bit more realistic. Um, up here you can adjust how quickly the camera follows the helicopter so the default is 50% you can of course make it faster or slower and you have all kinds of other stuff right here um, you know your display options your audio options I mean you have all kinds of stuff and then of course your language you know because the Phoenix simulator was made in Europe you know they're pretty user friendly when it comes to all the languages that you can run so you guys know there's so many different languages being spoken in the European continent they have to kind of make it friendly for all you guys um, aside from that you have all your models right here and uh, as you can see here you know lots of helicopters this um, particular version of Phoenix uh, has not been upgraded or updated one beauty or one good thing about Phoenix Simulator is that once you purchase this program you can go to the old online updates and, and constantly update it to the latest and greatest version which is great you don't have to pay out of pocket money to have a new version of Phoenix and as you start doing updates and upgrades you start getting more stuff and this is the unmodified unupdated version um, of Phoenix version 3 and as you can see still even though it's not been updated it has a lot of stuff in here you have all kinds of helicopters everything from like an Avant Aurora all the way down to like an Outrage uh, Velocity 50 JR Vibes all kinds of stuff and as for like the performance ones and then like if you will go to like electrics you have like anything from like a beam to most of the e-flight helicopters like Gowies Outrage 550 I mean all kinds of stuff and you even Sentry Swifts and then every time you like pick a helicopter for example let's go back to performance for example if I wanted to pick like let's go down here let me pick for example example like outrage velocity 50 if you click on this arrow it gives you three options it gives you a 3d a beginner and a sport of course the 3d is the hardest to fly it's the most nimble it's the most aggressive so just click on it loads your model click on finished and now your model is loaded so um, quite, quite, quite a cool like interface if you look at it I mean it's got like it, it just it's very uh, visually appealing the uh, the graphics are awesome in my opinion really 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 cool so let me see here let's crash again there we go then if you want to make changes to your model and you know actually on the Phoenix simulator a lot of these models come pre-tuned uh, actually they they come pre-configured pretty nicely but if you want to make a change to the model then what you do is you just basically come in here to the top to the model and then you go to edit and then basically at this point you can go ahead and start making changes so here you can just move the slider and change the uh, level of difficulty of how the model flies so like you know the more the more advanced you go like here in the beginner section look all the way all the way out here to the left the model is like really really stable really slow and if you move this all the way out to the advanced level it gets like really 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 nimble and really fast and really unstable and of course you can go to where it says detailed and you can make all kinds of changes to the physical configuration of the model you know you can change the weight make it lighter you know of course all these changes start to affect the way the helicopter flies I really don't recommend going into all that kind of stuff I mean there's there's certain things that you might want to look at like you know the expo settings right here for example for elevator aileron and rudder um, there's certain things that you want to look at like the tail rotor you know like how many uh, you know how many uh, pirouettes you're doing and stuff like that like the max pirouette rate this is similar to what Bobby showed you with the real flight you basically specify how many degrees per second it's at six it's an arbitrary number for some reason is a 56885 as you start changing the model like I showed you before from like beginner to expert those settings start to change automatically but you can again come in here and fine-tune everything when you're done fine-tuning you just give the model a new name and you just go ahead and click on finish and it takes care of it I'm not gonna go ahead and do that for now um, failures this is cool I think real flight has this too so if you want to create new failures and stuff like that you can for example like tell it to randomly like 
have an engine failure as you're practicing. And that kind of forces you to kind of practice auto rotation. So it's a really cool thing to do. Um, you can select your options for the failures. Um, same with like, for example, like elevator or cyclic pitch and stuff like that. You can tell it to like after takeoff, just have a failure on the elevator or the cyclic uh, elevator, elevator um, or on the aileron or on the rotor. Um, so you can set up all kinds of failures there. I mean, there's really all kinds of stuff in here. It's, it's a pretty simple program. It's very intuitive, very easy to use, and it doesn't have a lot of features, but it has enough features to do what you need it to do. Um, you know, you can select your weather, change the weather, um, overall, your, like your layouts and stuff like that. Um, and then, of course, you have all kinds of stuff like your camera, like you can select your views. I have it on auto zoom because I like it that way. And then, um, on this place, you can select like your simulation speed, like you know your controller. Like for example, say controller. Now it puts a controller here on the bottom left hand corner of the screen. Of course, I can move this controller around or make it bigger. I want to make my controller like pretty big in here, and I uh, just leave it here on this side. Um, there's all kinds of displays you can show here, like binoculars, for example. That's kind of cool. That's where it shows you, like Bobby was showing you in real, real flight before. If you're flying around and you go like way out there, really far away, that binoculars show you a close-up view of the helicopter, so you can kind of see your orientation and stuff like that. You have your wind compass and logbook timer, all kinds of stuff in here under the displays. And then, of course, your toolbar options, um, where you can just basically select like you know the toolbars that come up here on the left. You can select favorites where you can have fav favorite models and stuff like that. Um, the flight recorder, this is kind of like, again, sort of like what Real Flight offers. Um, you can open the flight recorder and then you get this little menu right here and then you can start recording your flights and stuff like that, which is pretty cool. Um, let's see what else. You got training and then you got all kinds of training. So you have a tutorial browser and then you have like hover training, auto rotation training and all kinds of stuff. And then competition. This is kind of cool. This is more of like a game. I think again Real Flight has a similar option where you just select something like for example like bomb drop and then it'll give you like uh, a target where you uh, drop the bombs. That's mostly done for airplanes and stuff like that but there's all kinds of stuff in here on their competition as well um, and then finally the multiplayer you can just basically go online with the phoenix simulator and similar to the um, real flight you can have like you can create you can go into existing rooms or create your own room and fly with your buddies and stuff like that which is really cool so that's it that's uh phoenix simulator for you guys as you can see it's not as elaborate as uh real flight but yet, it's actually a pretty good simulator. It's, uh, it's quite simple, it's easy to install. It works on Macs as well as Windows. Uh, you need, I believe, a boot camp partition on your Mac to be able to run it. And uh, it, it allows you to run any transmitter, whether it is Futaba, JR, High Tech, uh, Spectrum, anything like that. And it's, uh, it's actually pretty lightweight as well. That's one thing that I uh, forgot to mention. Um, I believe personally, and I might be wrong with this, you guys might criticize me for saying something that I'm not right with, but I am pretty sure that the real flight needs a lot of system power to be able to run efficiently. And yes, of course, you can have real flight and you can remove a lot of these options like smoke and shadows and all these things and make it run well. Phoenix is a, it's a lighter footprint type of software, so you don't need a supercomputer to be able to run it and be able to practice. So it's a more sort of like, I guess you could say, uh, um, it really not entry level, but it's a more, uh, uh, it requires less computer power and it's sort of a, a, a more economical simulator, but yet it has a lot, of, a lot of good features, it has pretty solid physics, and it works really, really well. So next we're going to be talking about uh, SimStick. Okay guys, we're going to talk a little bit about this little gadget right here called the SimStick. This was an idea of uh, some guys up in England and stuff. and. Uh, they released this uh, several months ago, I believe, maybe over a little bit over a year ago or so. Um, this is a device that uh, works with your USB port in your computer. It's a wireless device, and uh, it basically just, uh, what it does is it, it, it turns into an interface, a wireless interface, for your transmitter to work with simulators. Um, the easiest one to set up with is Phoenix Simulator, but it also works with Real Flight. I believe it has support or it will have support for other simulators as well. Um, really cool gadget. Uh, a lot of people ask me, well, why would I need a SimStick? Well, the answer is simple. 
what you do is you actually set this up. There's a lot of people that have computers that are like nicely, uh, say desktops that are nicely set up on, on a desk. And uh, you know, instead of having this cord coming out of the computer or whatever, having to plug in your regular transmitter all the time, what you do is you get a little cheap like receiver from Spectrum, like a 6,000, I have a 6100, AR6100 receiver. What you do is you bind this to your transmitter, and it could be any Spectrum or any JR transmitter. It could be like a DX6i, or it could be a DX7, DX7S, DX8, um, and so forth. And so what you do is you plug this right here into your SIM stick. And basically, let's get it plugged in here. And it plugs right into the port on your SIM stick. Then you take your original interface, USB interface for your computer. You plug one end into your SIM stick and you plug the USB into the other end of the SIM stick. You end up with this kind of weird, I don't know, bunch of wires and stuff. But the cool thing about this is you plug this into your USB port in your computer and you talk it away like behind your desk or whatever. And then all you need to do is when you want to fly your simulator, all you have to do is you fire up your simulator software and you turn on your transmitter. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this into our computer here, Bobby's supercomputer. So let's say that I'm just coming home from, uh, I don't know, a day at the field or a day at work and I want to fly my simulator. All I have to do is turn on my uh, simulator software, open it up, and then I take my transmitter, which could be the same transmitter I used to fly at the field every day or whatever or on the weekends. All I do is turn on my transmitter, go to the model that is bound to that receiver, and I now have complete control over my helicopter. So it's, it's a really cool gadget because, you know, again, you don't have to worry about, you know, plugging in your transmitter into uh, your, uh, your wire and have wires like sticking out. This is actually very useful when you have like a setup like this where say, you know, you have a big screen TV and you're like in your living room and you have like a computer like tucked away somewhere or whatever plugged into the TV via, I don't know, HDMI cable or something. All you have to do is just fire up the software turn on your transmitter and go fly. And a SIM stick I believe is available for about the order of about 40 US dollars. So it's a pretty cool gadget. So that, that, is, uh, that is all for the SIM stick. All right, so now we're gonna talk about some more tips and tricks for the simulators. This is called how to get the most out of your simulator experience. So from what I've noticed, it's just like anything else. The longer you do things, the better you're going to get at it or the more efficient you're going to get or more proficient you're going to get at it. Anyway, so if you want to learn to play guitar, you have to play a lot. So if you want to learn to fly, you got to fly all the time. So that means for you kids out there, instead of spending a whole afternoon on Xbox, spend a whole afternoon on the simulator and you'll get much better. Guys, instead of laying on the lazy boy and cracking open a beer, crack open a beer and sit here and uh, you know, play your simulator. Anywho, so I'm going to show you a few tips and tricks to get the most out of your sim. So the first thing that I would recommend, so let's say you're flying, we've got Real Flight 6 here, more uh, proficient with this. Oh crap, <laughs> we must have broken it when we took off. So we sit here and fly around. Let's just say you've been, I don't know, simming for 5-10 minutes and you're getting bored, for instance, right? There's a few different things that you can work on, a few different strategies. Number one, we're going to call it improving your reflexes. So I'm going to go into here and I'm going to edit the model. Uh, this is a custom uh, N5C that I've done. So we'll go into quick edit. And what we're going to do is we're going to turn out the cyclic pitch deflection, cyclic roll deflection, collective pitch, max and collective pitch. Man, we're just going to change everything. So I think stock, it was like at 11 degrees or so. We'll change it to like, I don't know, 14 degrees on cyclic and I don't know, 15 or 16 degrees on collective. So all I'm doing here is I'm just giving bigger values. Why? Because if it's a little faster, then that's gonna force me to make my reactions and my reflexes much, much, much faster. So even though in real life you might be flying a slow helicopter, it doesn't hurt to be flying something fast in the sim. So you can see my roll rate and my flip rate is pretty outrageous now. But you know what I'm going to do it just to practice things. I'm going to practice my low smack or whatever. Let's say if I wanted to practice, uh, I don't know, stationary flips. If I'm sitting here in real life, maybe my flip rate's like this. If you're going faster, 
then that'll help you with your, you know, get your reaction speed better and just get everything going, you know, a little bit faster like that. So number one, you can uh, increase your cyclic rates and you can make everything faster and speed everything up. Number two, multiplayer. If you get bored, friends are always better, right? Multiplayer, go online, try to show off in front of people. Um, there's combat, there's games you can do online. Multiplayer is a really good tool. Uh, most of these simulators, I'm pretty, I know Real Flight does, I'm not sure about Phoenix. You can join two radios up together through the back of here and you can play like a split screen and you can play with a buddy. So try doing that, that's what I would recommend, multiplayer. Number three, you can work on bailing out of crashes. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get going here and let's say I'm flying around, let's say I'm practicing any maneuver. What I would recommend is whenever you feel like it, you hit throttle hold and you try to land it. So I'm flying around, I hit hold. And then I land it. Oh crap. <laughs> let's try it again. So I'm flying around, whatever. So I hit hold there, please land, please land. Yeah, that was a good auto that time. So just hit hold. So we'll spool back out. Let's say I'm TikToking. And then, oh, something breaks. Crap. So then I'll sit here and I'll try to recover. And <laughs> that one was a good land, but it didn't think so. Anyway, all we're trying to do is just get it to where if something happens in real life, you can totally do that. Uh, you can totally save it. Another thing for you real flight guys, here's a quick tip for you. If you're too lazy, <laughs> oh no, get out. If you're too lazy to wait for it to spool up every time, hit the P button. P is in Peter. So if I hit P, that's where it's going to respawn every time. So if I crash, I press P or I press the um, reset button and it's ready to go. I can crash there, press it again, it's ready to go. I don't need to wait for it to spool up. You can even do it in the air. So let's say if I'm practicing my inverted hovering, uh, let's say right there, we'll get it in one spot for the most part. Hit P, okay, crash. When I reset, it's right there. So this just keeps things going a little bit faster. The next thing that we're gonna go over is we're gonna do some new maneuvers, right? So you get bored, just try something new. If you always pirouette to the left, let's try pirouetting to the right, for instance. You know, just different things that you wanna do. You wanna mix it up. Next thing, planes. Planes are fun, blimps are cool. Streamers, combat, just whatever you can do to get yourself doing this a little bit more, you know? Whatever you can do to get yourself on the simulator. And last but not least, fly to music. So I'm going to pull up a track from my uh, 3D Masters, for instance, that I have in here and fly to music. Try to choreograph something, just put music in the background, put on Pandora and just fly around. Just make it exciting. So we'll get this going here. If you can hear it. So I'll try to... Oh, it's like lagging or something. So I'll try to choreograph it to music. I don't know. Anywho, you get the idea. So that's uh, flying to music right there. So if you guys want to practice for XFC or 3D Masters, you're more than welcome to do that. Anyway, these are things to make your simulator a little bit more fun. If all else fails, just goof around, find something cool, make it go faster, and it'll be good. So now Bert's going to come on in and he's going to give you a few more tips that he's found to be helpful. All right, guys, uh, I'm just going to wrap this up and talk a little bit further about what uh, a few things that you need to keep in mind on how to make your simulator experience more useful for the real world. And Bobby's basically going to go out to the field later and he's going to show you a few things and kind of explain to you how what you learn here translate to the real world. But I'm going to give you again a few pointers. One thing that I see a lot of people do is like I've seen guys, for example, that are like hovering level I'm not kidding hovering level and they just take the simulator and they just start doing like just all this kind of crazy stuff nonsense that just does not work um, you know just be realistic you know if, if you're learning to hover use the simulator to teach you to hover if you're learning to do backwards flying focus on learning backwards flying if you want to master I don't know tail in uh, inverted hover work on that just just try to have some sort of discipline i'm not saying don't have fun with it i mean if you want to try to do pirouetting flips when you can't even hover nose in right side up 
then go ahead and do it because you know I, I'm sure that it'll be fun. Bobby put this thing in pause in the wrong spot, <laughs> so I have to like bail it out of uh, crazy <laughs> wobble every time. But uh, nice wobble. Um, but you know if you're if you're learning this, for example, just practice this. Just just do this. Um, there's a lot of tools on the simulator that you can use to 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 teach you how to hover. Uh, nose in, tail in, as well as to teach you other orientations. You know, one thing that, I, again, I see a lot of people do is just keeping ahead. And, you know, if you guys have watched my Learning 3D series, you've seen how important it is to learn your basics. Use this as a tool to learn what you need to learn. Don't skip ahead 27 steps and try to learn something that you will just simply not be able to learn because you have not mastered your basics. I have a lot of people, you know, I've heard from a lot of people. Every once in a while I hear somebody say, well, I mean, I don't understand because I can do this in the simulator and I can do that and I can do rolling circles in the sim and I can do pirouette flips, but in the real world, I can't do it. The point of the matter is if you can do it in the simulator, you can do it in the real world. What's happening is you're really not doing it well in the simulator. Ask yourself if you're really, really doing it or if you're just kind of skimming through it. You know, a lot of times you can do certain maneuvers with couple of inputs and drive the helicopter through the maneuver where you think you're doing the maneuver but you're really not controlling the helicopter through the maneuver and one way that I tell people to verify that they really can do it in the simulator and not just kind of fly through it but really do it in control is to take advantage of some of the features that the simulators have to offer for example on real flight as well as on Phoenix you can change the weather on real flight you can adjust the wind just put a strong 15 mile an hour crosswind and try to do that same maneuver with that crosswind because what's going to happen at that point is, is you're going to be forced to make corrections to to correct for that wind and as you make corrections you start to realize if you have that kind of control or if you don't if um, for example you know a few things that, like just to give you a very basic example here if I am trying to learn just a basic role okay like a stationary stationary role you know, I put the helicopter in a hover sideways and I start rolling like this. Okay, does that mean that I can do this in the real world? Not really. I mean, I can literally just use full aileron here without touching the collective and it'll do it. It's about to crash, but it still does it. You can't do it that way in the real world. The real world is usually less forgiving than the simulator. Don't ask me why, but it is not as forgiving. My point here is, is that use this as a real tool to teach you what you need to learn. Have fun with it. If you want to spend an hour just, again, skipping ahead 27 steps of where you logically should be, do it. But always try to go back to what you need to practice, at least for 10 minutes. If you do that 10 minutes a day, you will progress immensely. And uh, where I really think that this really, really shines at is showing you the creating muscle memory for you. As, you. as you start doing these maneuvers, new maneuvers and stuff, you start learning your orientations and you start teaching your brain, your muscle memory in your brain to be able to make corrections without having to think about it. That is where this excels at. But in terms of everything else, it's really not that great because your spatial orientation, the way you look at things is completely different because you're looking at a screen. You don't have that three-dimensional effect that you have in the real world. So with that being said, practice, practice, practice with discipline what you need to learn. Change your weather factors, your wind, the wind direction, the wind uh, 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 strength and everything else. And then when you go out to the field, try it out in the real world pretty up high. And if you're comfortable, then you'll, you'll notice before, soon before you know it, you're going to start getting more and more comfortable doing it a little bit lower. The way the maneuvers translate from the simulator to the real world initially is completely different. So you do have to try it in the real world pretty high. Don't assume that because you can do it here, you can do it there. Because again, you can get away with a lot of stuff here that you cannot get away with there. But again, with that being said, um, once again, if you have a sort of a discipline or a routine on how to learn the logical progress of, of learning, um, you, this, this could be a great, great tool. So I believe now we're going to head out to the flying field and Bobby's just going to give you a few more pointers. So from out of the simulator, here we go, sunny Florida. It's a beautiful February day. I'm in shorts and short sleeves, absolutely loving life. So we are very fortunate to fly down here, but for those of you stuck in cold weather or you just feel like doing some simming, it's time to sit down behind the computer and take a look at what we got here. So the first thing, you always hear, oh, I can do it on sim. Okay, well, I can do a lot of things on the sim, and I can do a lot of things in real life. But where's the disconnection? Why can't some guys do it right? 
Number one is power. I think a lot of the uh, helicopters in the simulator are just overpowered. So what I want to do first is I want to show you a few things to take a look at while you're at the field. And then you can either make some notes or scratch it down or uh, you know just keep a mental image. And then when you go home, you can relay that to your model and you can make the necessary changes. Right. So number one, I would say, is totally power. So let's get a feel for how fast your helicopter is going to fly. Number two is just going to be field conditions. So today, luckily we're flying with the sun to our back. But if you're looking into the sun, that would totally have something to do with it. Wind is another thing. Right now we've got a very light breeze coming from our left side, so that's really negligible. If it's really, really windy, you might need to replicate that by going into the wind settings and adjusting the wind. Um, the next thing is your depth perception. Um, sometimes in the simulator, especially if you have like a viewport set up, you can see what your model's doing the whole time, which is great. But when you're here, you know, once the helicopter starts getting a little ways away, it's gonna get smaller. The next thing is your cyclic rates. We're gonna take a look at your cyclic rates. Um, the CGY 750 that I'm flying here actually has a menu. If you tap the, uh, the far right plus sign, if you tap that one, two, or three times, it'll show you your maximum roll rate and your maximum flip rate throughout your flight in degrees per second. You can then take that and you can go into, in real flight for instance, you can go and you can change that in the electronic fly bar section. You can change that to a degree per, sec per second and match exactly how fast your helicopter is. V-Bar or Beast X might have that, I'm not too sure. So let's fly this thing and uh, let's get going. So first we're just going to show you some things to look at that you might not exactly pay attention to all the time, but uh, you should for your simulator. And if my feet move around a lot, we got love bugs out here. <laughs> so first, let's go into idle up two. That's where we're going to be doing most of our flying in the simulator and everything. I just want to look at the positive and negative. So let's punch it. That's positive, and then I'll shoot negative. And I can see that's how fast it's climbing along. So I might want to count, for instance, one, two, three, how far it takes, you know, how long it takes to go up a certain altitude. I can then go and do like a rainbow, for instance, shoot back and forth, and get an idea for how fast the model's actually going. Now this is the Synergy M5C, for instance, in Real, Real Flight 6. It's already in there for the Heli Mega Pack. So some of these values should be pretty close. So that's number one. Let's get the collective map. Number two is your cyclic rates. So let's take a look at our flip rate. So that's my flip rate with the elevator, backwards and forwards. Notice they're matched. And then we'll take a look the same for cycling. Sorry, for aileron. And I want to try to get it matched as good as I can. Next, let's see how, how much it takes to bog something, okay? So first, actually lastly, to, uh, to finish out with our rates, we'll look at our pirouette speed. So that's a full pirouette with the pirou comp. My right hand can stay off the stick. But uh, that's a full pirouette. I don't know in terms of degrees per second exactly what that is, but you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, you know, it's a pretty fast rate and same to the right. So you want to match your pirouette speeds, you want to match your pitch, you want to match your cycling, everything correctly to the simulator. Now let's talk about power. Uh, I guess the best thing to do is to see what it takes to bog the helicopter. So I'm going to start TikToking for instance. Now I'm going to start really feeding in a lot of collective, kill it, kill it, kill it. and it's dying. <laughs> you can hear it dying. So my motor stayed pretty rich the whole time, good thing it's pumped. But you can see that, yeah, it's not unboggable. If I take both sticks and move them to maximum, it kills the motor. So try to portray that, go into the power settings, take some power out if you need to. Next, let's take a look at wind. So right now there's really no wind. But for instance, if I were to be flying around and I wanted to do some autos, I'd be have to come right to left. So if I wanted to do an auto, I'd have to come in this way, for instance. I'm going to bail out just so the helicopter doesn't get dirty here. <laughs> so that's wind. Another thing, if it's in your face, you're going to want to keep it out away from you just for safety. Okay, now, how are we going to do the things that we want to do in real life that we do in the simulator? Number one, altitude. Biggest problem everybody has is altitude. Everybody wants to practice stuff here. They want to practice their pyro flips and their reverse pyro flips and stuff. This is way too low. I'm one mistake high here. If I make a mistake, it's going in. So let's do, in the simulator, I recommend flying as low as you can so you can see it. But in real life, let's take it up. 
three mistakes high, we always say. This is my new ground level. So for instance, if I'm flying back and forth, straight level, this is the new ground level. This is my new altitude. This is where I want to practice stuff. I can practice whatever I want here. I can do TikToks with flips and TikToks with rolls. And I can do pirouetting stuff and reverse pirouetting stuff. And I can do whatever really I want to. And I'll have plenty of room to save it. So if I get in trouble here, once again, what I always recommend, and uh, I showed you in the last Smack 101 series, or you can see it in some of our other episodes. If you're in trouble, for instance, I get in trouble here, just go to zero. Look how much time you have to save it. Zero, zero, zero. Okay? Don't feed in a bunch of collective and try to save it. So that's the first thing. So fly up high. Next, what I want to do is I want to practice some things over and over. Let's say my goal for the month is to follow Bert in his learning 3D series. And let's say I want to learn, uh, I don't know, snakes, for instance, right? What you want to do is do some snakes every single flight. Now, every flight you go out there, you're doing your snakes, okay? Both disc in and disc out. And notice we're nice and high. Nice and high, plenty of room. If I make a mistake, uh-oh, uh-oh, I can save it. So first you want to go over the things that you really want to practice. Next, have fun. Flying should be fun. So do your, I don't know, if TikToks are fun for you, do your TikToks, right? If you want to work on cracking backflips, I don't know, work on your cracking backflips. Just do whatever you want to do, you know, just like the simulator, keep it interesting. Keep it interesting. And then once you get a little bit of that in, okay, let's work on our hovering basics, okay? So I can bring it lower, and I'm going to work on my hovering. Nose in, sideways. I'm going to work on my inverted hover. Nose in, sideways, you know, pirouetting, all sorts of things. So these are a few things to keep in mind when it's time to actually take your simulator flying and take it to the real thing at the field. And very, very lastly, what we recommend in the simulator, if you want to keep it going, music. Here I have my iPhone. I have every single song that I, that I know of in my phone. Uh, get yourself a boombox. Hook it up to your car. Uh, plug in earphones. Uh, this thing can, this transmitter can play music. Plug earphones into here. Practice with music. Go up high, have fun, have a spotter with you in case you run out of fuel or something happens. You know, just make it fun. So take the same sort of training that you're doing in the simulator and, and apply it to real life just like we did here. Hey guys, we're here at the E-Fest once again. If you recall last year, we did a uh, Micros episode while we were here last year. So now we're here at tons of indoor flying and whatnot. But really the reason that we're here right now with Mr. Kyle Stacy is for this guy, the simulator. Uh, I have to say, I've been using a simulator for a very long time, but this guy right here is the simulator expert. I flew one of his models the other day and it was the closest that I've ever felt to the real thing. So Knife Edge just gotta call him next time. So Kyle, how long have you been flying? I've been flying for about 10 years. Okay, so I've been flying for about 8 or 9, so we're about the same. I hardly ever use a simulator. How often do you use the simulator? Every single day for about 2 hours at least. Every day? Every day. Alright, this is why this kid is smoking me in terms of every sort of maneuver there is in competitions and whatnot. That's what it takes right there. Now how do you keep yourself interested in the simulator? How do you not get bored? Uh, different models and music. I'm always flying to music on the sim, new music, new flying style, new maneuvers. All right, I'll agree with that. I'll agree with that. Now, do you fly planes on there too? Absolutely. <laughs> okay. So, okay. So, Kyle is the expert at setting it up. So, what we're going to do is we're going to film him showing exactly here. He's going to take a bone stock Rave NV fly bar list model, um, the electric, on Real Flight 6, and he's going to show you how to tweak it. Just these little tweaks, Bert and I talked about a few. He's going to show you a few more how to get your model to fly exactly like how you want it to. So, this is Kyle. He's the best at the simulators. So, let's watch him tweak them up. Hey, guys. Kyle here at E-Fest, and Bobby asked me to show you how to fly my model. So, we're going to go to the edit menu and show you what I do. So, first we go into aircraft and then edit. And you see we have everything over here on the left. So we have airframe, electronics, radio. So first we're going to airframe. Then we have fuselage, main battery. You can see you can change how many cells, milliamps, stuff like that. Then next we have canopy, which is nothing you really change. Heli mechanics. This is where I change the most. Uh, come in here, you can change weight, uh, KV. Then we have tail boom, change all the stuff in the tail rotor, and main rotor. So first we're going to start with the tail. 
Um, usually when I do like full pitch funnels or hurricanes, the tail in here doesn't always hold as well as I'd like it to. So the first thing I do is I come to diameter and I just highlight it and then I type in something like 12.5. Something a little bit longer, tail blades longer, more authority. Next, we'll come into main rotor, and I lower the pitch a little bit. I use the same value as I do in real flight as I do as real life. So I go to 12. And 12. 10 degrees on cyclic seems to work pretty well. We still use 710s. Uh, they track well, still good flip rate. So we'll get out of airframe, and then we'll go into electronics. Now we have all of our servos. Standard speed, it's fine. Governor. So this is where you adjust your head speed. Um, I fly on my 90 electric about 2200, so I'll keep that about the same. And here you have your CGY 750 electronic fly bar. And here's just the channels, you know, there's nothing too basic or too advanced to change in here, I mean. So what you can do is you go up to the top, go to options, display properties, and advanced. So now you get all of these values. Um, these you can kind of adjust to your liking. These kind of adjust bobble or stop rate or anything like that. I usually bump this up to about 315-ish for my liking. We'll do that in both aileron and elevator. All right, so now we're pretty much set to go and to try it out. So we'll save it, we'll call it Kyle. Now box stock on this, the flip rate is alright, but see it's a little bit faster now that I upped it and the stop is pretty solid. It feels just like my uh, 90s and everything I fly in real life. So it's very solid, very good feeling. But what I notice here is the flip rate's way faster than what I like, and it's very sensitive around center. So we'll hit hold, bring it in, and go back to the edit menu. Can you turn on the transmitter? Yeah. So I thought the tail was too sensitive for my liking, so we're gonna come down to software radio. And see, so you get all your output channels, aileron, elevator, throttle, Rudder. This is all we're going to change. Oh, and pitch is down here, but we don't usually change anything in there. So, expo is at zero. Well, I'm going to put it at about 20. I run 20 on everything in real life. That's better. All right. And the pirouette rate is just like how we adjusted elevator and aileron. So, we go into yaw under electronic fly bar, and we'll bump that down to about 600. Perfect. Now, we'll come out here, save it again. And on the left hand side you can turn all these values on, this is just kind of stuff you can change, aircraft, field, all that. So we'll come down to radio so we can get radio in here. Yeah, yeah. Alright. Much better. This is really close to what I fly in real life. Uh, the flip rate, the pirouette rate, and the sensitive sensitivity. It's all very similar. So there's nothing really that I change a whole lot. Um, I can do this in about a couple minutes if I really wanted to, and it flies just like how I do in real life. So that is how I adjust my models. Thanks, Bobby and uh, Kyle, for uh, bringing that information from eFest. Um, so guys, that's it for number 22. Um, I hope that this was useful. There were a lot of tips about how to make your simulator experience, learning experience more useful. And uh, of course, as, as always, we listen to your suggestions. This episode was brought to you thanks to your suggestions. So please go to our website, www.smacktalkrc.com. Click on the suggestions link and send us your suggestions for new episodes. And we'll definitely, definitely, definitely bring them out to you. So. Again, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you next month, uh, episode number 23. See ya. Dude, where are you flying the blimp?
I'm practicing. For what? I got inspired. Look, I want to fly that. <laughs> I'm practicing. Now let me practice. About all of them, we could literally, like Bobby said, spent like, what happened to our logo? <laughs> <laughs> Just stay there. Stay there. We're going to do an edit. I'm not, even gonna I'm not even going to cut. I'm not even going to cut. sucks. Fucking piece of shit. All right. It's just going to switch back. No, no, it's fine. All right, we're going to resume at uh, where we were before. So there's so many of them out there that if we were to really actually to talk about all of them. <laughs> what a piece of shit. <laughs> what the fuck? Dude, this just, fucking sucks. Just turn it back. D do that one. There okay. you go. Hold on. Let me get my composure. <laughs>